known for being a place of mediation. Nothing is too much, but it also is not too little. Prior to 1968, there hadn't been any racial tension that was known or acknowledged in the city, and was viewed as a commonly small and peaceful place to live. By 1929, Akron was named home for three tire factories, including B.F. Goodrich, Firestone, Goodyear, and General Tire. Akron, Ohio was soon named the rubber capital city of the world due to its many tire companies that were prospering. This was one of the reasons why the B.F. Goodrich Tire Company wanted to place their world headquarters in Opportunity Park when urban renewal started to invade the city in the 1950s. With the city's backing, the proposed project, much anticipated and excitement came along with it. It was to be the first step into the future of Akron. People see, just you believe. The idea of urban renewal came about in America from the Housing Acts of 1949 and 1954. The time when the most urban renewal happened in America and almost became a new trend for cities was after World War II, when soldiers started coming home and families became bigger, a new notion of an American home sprang about. This new American dream led to drastic changes in America. Highways and roadways were being built for transportation into the central city and more spread out areas. In the central city, most people lived in close quarters that were not up to standard and were not properly kept up. Businesses were expanding their buildings, but to keep up with mass production and new suburban houses and apartments were being built to replace old ones that were falling down, to name a few. All this was made possible by government funds that supported the new constructions, urban renewal. to build their world headquarters in Akron. An opportunity park with its close location to the canal was the decidedly perfect place to build. The project contained 404 acres that had to have 1,400 families relocate. The federal grant money they received was $30,500 and a local share of $15,400. Goodrich even supplied some of their own money for the project, totaling $3,500. The housing, recreational, and industrial park sites within the boundaries were all demolished to recreate this project. In the community of Akron, this project was said to be a renewal of faith, bringing new jobs in for the people and modernizing the city. In 1968, the first model for the project was presented to the Mayor, Area of Progress Board, Planning Commission, Area Chamber of Congress, and the City Council. City officials were excited for the project as a step forward for the city. The excitement for the building was peaking. By 1965, the project was approved by the city and the funds were released. And the next year, Goodrich passed the billion mark in the sales and the planned completion date for the project was said to be 1971. Things were going well for the company and the city. They were looking at the, this project as a beacon of hope for the community to move forward, modernize and bring jobs to help stabilize the city in it rather than fleeing from it. By the 1960s, though, America was reconsidering the benefits of urban renewal. Jane Jacobs was one of the more well-known activists and authors who were against urban renewal and the destruction of community ties. Her book, The Death and Life of Great American Cities, became the most influential in the cause. People were starting to see the consequences outweighed these benefits. The Planning Commission and Urban Renewal Board would give little thought to this displacement of families. The architecture of these new buildings were also flawed and not necessarily sound in structure. Community ties were also being severed in the process and more people were having individualistic thinking as a result and no, had no community involvement in the planning of the projects. Racial, racial discrimination and tension was a major problem in urban renewal. Many more African-American families than white families were being forced to move with little to no notice or money for compensation. Many of the urban renewal projects were located to clear out slums that were largely located where black neighborhoods presided and replace them with housing that were nowhere near affordable to, to them after the project was done. 
Along with the downfall in popularity for urban renewal was the Akron riots that took over the news headlines in Akron, replacing the excitement of the BF Goodrich project and was the start of a new way of thinking for the community. In many cities across America, citizens were starting to stand up against urban renewal and the lack of interest in minority rights by city officials. In New York, Chicago, and other major cities, the Puerto Rican group Young Lords were getting attention because of their riots, protests, and public speakings in the late 1960s. The Black Panthers were also getting public and nationwide news. one of the streets that Opportunity Park Line was located on. These riots started on July 16th when police broke up a fight between groups of young blacks from rival gangs. The next day, large crowds of people gathered on Wooster Avenue and more police were called in. The riots resulted in throwing of rocks, buildings being set on fire, tear gas being thrown, and the mayor proclaiming a state of national emergency, imposing curfews that were heavily located in mostly black areas and the National Guard troops being called in. The riots happened so suddenly that Mayor John S. Ballard ordered the Citizens Commission to find out the report and report back what caused the riots, if it were preventable, and what they could do to stop. The report stated that the riots were a result of resentment against discrimination towards blacks in all areas of community life, personal animosities, opportunism, and general contagion arising from an emotional building. Riots were not planned or organized. They were a result of racial tension in the community, May, many to do with the urban renewal projects in Akron. Once Mayor Ballard lifted the curfew, it seemed to help release some of the emotions, and the night ended with a street dance with both sides of the riots participating. socioeconomic statuses more closely and tried to better their community, not just by building more factories, but by considering giving equal opportunity to their citizens. The news focused less on projects like Opportunity Park and more on stories like the riots. Akron was finally stepping forward in the right direction for their future. The last article that was found in this research that specifically states something about the Opportunity Park project was the, about Norma Newberry the last Akron citizen to be displaced from her home in 1988. It was said that she was a well-known cat lady to the community that moved to California and never returned to Akron. Today, there are still many BF Goodrich companies located in Akron, and some of the land used for their original buildings were sold off and bought by other companies, but the building didn't reach the expectation due to this new outlook on community modernism.